coffee back after I what is it two months, Ray? I can't believe it's been. Like it, so it seems like it. It seems like it. I've been very busy and uh, missed. I missed my cats and coffee. I've missed you. I I know you have a mug. We show everybody your new mug. I have my cat mug. <laughs> You've been touch not mug. I do. I love it. Oh my gosh. So how do we get a touch not mug? Oh boy. <laughs> I uh it took me months and months to make this one. I have to we'll figure to... this out. I, I, I know how to do this actually. I can make them um I could actually make them in one of my accounts. So I'll let you know and I'll I'll ship you some. We'll have some. So if you come see us at the games potentially in the not so distant near future, you might be able yep. to get yourself a touch not coffee mug because that's all kinds of go. fantastic. I love that. Ray, how have Hi. you been? It's it's been crazy for both of us as the I want to say Highland Games and and um I know. all things Scottish has as seasons have started on both coasts. And I, I know it. And it's like, hold on to the steering wheel for dear life, because here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that That's right. And uh, trying to keep up with our regular, you know, scheduled months of what of clan of hat and clans and things has been a little bit of a tough thing, folks. So I want to apologize a little for that. It's a tough blend when we knew it was going to happen. And I think I might have mentioned it about a month and a half or two ago, but that once the season starts, things will slow down a little bit and there'll be a blend and boy, yeah. it, happened. it sure happened it's been fun watching um where you've been on your youtube channel i i have recorded the victoria highland games i've recorded the costa mesa or scottish fest in southern california and wow. i don't have them out yet because you know how it is for me you you have these seamless recordings you can just post Mine, I have to edit them. I have to put them together. It's a slow process for me, unfortunately. So mine are right. traveling behind. But we have been doing it. We've been out there in the world, both of us, running around, supporting, and um, and and doing things, all things Klein Hatton Association. And Ray, you've been a phenomenal job. And thank you for that. And oh. uh, everybody needs to go over on your YouTube channel and watch some of the fun stuff and the things you've been Tell us about being um, Clan Hatton Association was the host clan. Honored, cl honored clan, they call honored it. Clan. Okay. Right. Believe me, I was going to mention it if you didn't prompt me like that, but thank you anyway. Yeah. Tell us about <laughs> that. How was that experience? Yeah. And you got to open the games. How fun. Yes, um, it was. It was very fun. Uh, the first time I've ever seen Clan Hatton Association um you know, as an honored clan in our area, because it just has never happened. I don't know if it's ever happened in the country, perhaps, but um, some of the Hatton clans are, of course, at times. McGilvray, for instance, was at that games last year. They were the honored clan. Uh, and when I was uh, convening for Macintosh, I was the honored clan in Rhode Island one year and et cetera. But, but for Clan Hatton to be it, it was a different thing. And uh it was very special to me and everything. I wanted to try to make sure as many other Hattons could be there, either with tents or just on foot, you know, and be with us. That's all you have to do, folks, is to participate. Uh, get there and say, it's me and I'm with you. And and, and uh, that's how it works. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to miss somebody probably, but we had McGilvray and McBain and Parkinson, uh, McIntosh, uh, Shaw, few others with us um did in the you have mac thomas and... did you have mac thomas yes a mac thomas thank you yes uh, we did we we did have a mac thomas yeah my friend my friend eric he lives up there in maine thank you for saying that very much um we have 12 folks and it's tough to get everybody especially to try to remember which of the 12 were at a place a week <laughs> ago when i go to so many things it was a lot of fun yeah that did a little speech at the stage and um Great weather, Albanock. What more could you say? Do you have any events in July? There's one in July. Um, it's called the Glasgow Lands in Northampton, Mass. It's a pretty big one. I'm very well attended every year and uh, always known for good weather. Pretty hot sometimes, but um, yeah, that's a good one. We still have two in June to go now. One this weekend, it was just the No Fame Games. And then uh, on the 29th, uh, the fort number four, that's what this shirt is. 
Oh, this, nice. is a logo. this is the logo for the Ford at number four. Um, so if you watch my channel, um, and please subscribe to the Test Not channel, by the way. Um, I was just up at the Ford last Saturday. Don't tell everybody yet. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I was, uh, I told them I was a Touch Not what, um, Wildcat, and I'm here to, I'm here to take a look at the Ford. I'm going to be back in two weeks, and I want to have a look around. So they actually let me in. <laughs> uh, unaccompanied and I did a little self tour and I waylaid a guy who was one of the reenactors and he gave us a nice little two or three minute talk about what the place is about so I'll have that on in probably another week or two I have a lot of little videos from the fort that I did and where is this location one more time oh I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, it's Charlestown New Hampshire June 29th okay perfect it's a oh. French and Indian war uh, reenactment for it and this is the this is going to be the venue for the highland games it's a huge place it's got vast open fields behind it you'll see in my videos um it's great it's a great place for this and i can't wait for it to happen it sounds amazing have they um had the games there before is this the first one uh there has been a festival there for one or two years i think um it, it's under a different organization doing this year now uh, they're really using the fields and uh, the place, and, and there's a big splash of things going on. Stone lifting, uh, the Lundstrom Stones. He's a local uh, guy here uh, that um, former. Uh, he's passed away, I believe. His name was John Lundstrom, and he had he made two ring stones. They're four hundred and something pounds a piece, and he ca carried them, you know, one in each arm for the walk. The farmer's walk is what he initiated. If you ever heard of it. Those stones will be there. Uh, there's a lot of lot of uh, spectacles going on. Really, it's what they are. Things to th things you won't forget. You saw. <laughs> it, wow, uh, I can't wait to watch on your channel so we can kind of feel like we're there with you. Um, and this will motivate me. I actually am home for the first weekend since April. I get to stay home, and I'm going to get caught up on our channel here. So, guys, stay tuned here because the games we've attended will be out. And so you'll be able to run around with us and, and see what those are like. I got so behind. We also have another video coming out with Philip Beddoes that was recorded actually a couple months ago. And it's our oh, first good. installment about the battle of the, the North Inch. Um, I've always been intrigued with that battle. So he does a deep dive um, about this battle and and the different histories opposing histories about it for those who were really into history um that might be of interest so stay tuned and let's stay tuned with ray because ray posts really quickly and i love that ray that's it's going to be fun to see all things about the no fame games and then um the following weekend the fort the four yes really fun and this is clan mcthomas month i always enjoy learning things about the clans we're spotlighting i don't indeed, know about indeed. you but i learned i i i things i had no idea um i don't want to say the mcthomases were kind of late to the scene of the of the clan hat and what was the confederation they they really weren't it's just that they were part of the macintoshes up until the late part of the yes. century True. And so you don't really find them, you know, in the Canvara so much. You don't find them um, in some of the other books, uh, Clan Hatton and its kith and kin. Um, but there are still some very fascinating stories. We're going to hear more from the chief, um, Finnegan. Oh, great. Yeah, so he did an interview. We're just waiting to put the final touches on that so we can release that. And he's going to tell us all about the cock stain. But then reading more, you know, not only on their website and just uh, we also have our on the trails. There's a little tidbit about Clan McToms. Each clan, you know, has a little bit of information about their oranges. It was interesting to me also to learn that, you know, the Gallic TH sound was um, is the C and and vice versa. So you're gonna see that the sets of McThomas have a lot of C's. Combi, McCall, McComas, McCum, McCumbi. Um, and this is because the TH um, sound is, is Gallic for the C. So 
this is all very interesting. And you hear the chief also explain that. Um, and just talking a little bit more about um, Tommy Moore or Big Tommy. <laughs> and then Ian Moore. And some of the things these these chiefs did were incredible. Tommy Moore was the first um, McThomas. And then Ian Moore was a little bit further down the line. The things he did. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and including, including fighting his own son in disguise. And you have to think back to those times. It's the late 16th century and it's, it's pretty brutal in the North of Scotland, especially in the Highlands. It's pretty darn brutal. Right. And especially for a clan chief. So you were born into this. This is your birthright. You don't necessarily get to choose that you're going to be the clan chief, right? So right. you have a son and you know, you know, he's going to be clan chief one day. You have to know how to fight. Your existence and the, that of your clan is dependent upon these things, right? So right. he, can you imagine as a parent, you're struggling with this idea of, oh my goodness, you know, right. I make sure my son is battle worthy i need to make sure he can fight and fight well but the clan mcthomas takes its name from thomas known in gallic as tommy moore or big tommy and we learned previously earlier in the year we were talking about gallic and how more means big yes og means small so you're gonna see more m-o-r and og o-g um associated with different names and sometimes you're going to see those they look kind of like either surnames during times where there weren't yet surnames mm -hmm. or middle names um there is a common historical figure in the macintoshes john og macintosh from which a lot of macintoshes in the continental united states can trace their lineage Yes. Not realizing Og was not his middle name. It just meant he was the younger or the smaller. <laughs> right. You sure. Know. People do that. People do that nowadays, right? They'll say, you know, Stephen and Big Stephen, his father, or something like that. They'll people still do that. Yes. Well, and now you've got a you've got a, a copy of the Kinrara. And I, I always think I don't know how much you've been able to really look at that. It's interesting because the Kinrara constantly is describing the stature of people. When you get a chance, and for anyone else out there who's got a copy of the Kinrara, um, which is an account of the Macintoshes, um, it's one of the manuscripts, you'll see that it, it goes into great detail to describe when it starts to give a history of a person, it'll describe what they look like, their stature, hmm. in great detail. And so this was a thing um, to, to have these descriptions. And so this Moore and Og was very common at the time. So for the Thomases, this Tommy Moore, Big Tommy, was a descendant of the Clan Hatton Macintoshes. His grandfather was the son of William, the eighth chief of Clan Hatton. And Thomas lived in the 15th century at a time when the Clan Hatton Confederation was becoming large and unmanageable. So he actually took his kinsmen and followers uh. across the Grampians to Badenoch and Glen Shee, where they finally settled as a clan. Now, this was before the 1609 Band of Union. And so they were able to come back as, as one of those clans for the Band of Union. Oh, but good point. Yes. This is where they came from. So I find it very fascinating. And you're, you're going to hear more about the McThomases throughout the rest of the month. So it should be very interesting. We're finding with every clan in the association, <clears throat> excuse me, what was the Confederation? There are some great stories. <laughs> right right i'm i'm glad you uh mentioned the fact that they were macintoshes formally or in a clan hatton already it's not like you do like you say that that paragraph says you know beginning in the 15th 
in the 1580s, 1587, I think it is, you say, oh, that's late to the late to the picture or something. But they were there all the time in the blood and in the family. They just weren't called that. They just literally didn't have the name yet. That's all it was. They didn't show up out of a, they didn't crop up out of the ground one year. They were always there, just uh, named now. It's happened with Farkasons and Shaws and others, right? Yes, absolutely. So if this is another, yet another branch that kind Correct. of, out of the the clan hat and the macintoshes um and so right. um so wonderful wonderful history wonderful stories and i know that our friend virginia cream is um doing a lot of fun things over on the clan mcthomas youtube channel and yes, also on their social media so we'll put those links here as well so you can follow along with them it has been a while since we've been able to get on here. I've dealt with an invasion of scorpions here. Have you? <laughs> in Las Vegas. It's been in the news. And yeah, we, we had a swarm in our driveway. This, let me tell you, this is not fun. You know, they talk, everybody always tells me before I go to Scotland, watch out, there's, you know, there's going to be midges. I don't worry so much about the midges. You know, it's it's the scorpions that I really don't like. And then also my next door neighbor had a rattlesnake in their yard last week, about a week ago, right next door, you know, and you were talking about your games might be hot. We've been running at about 109, 110 Fahrenheit this last week. So... That's, is that what it is? They, the scorpions boiled out of their holes or something? It, it's, uh, yeah, they come out. We've had a lot of rain this year, and so we've got a lot more scorpions than normal, and we have a lot of rattlesnakes. But how How's it been for you in your neck of the woods, personally, Ray? What have you been up to? How's your summer going? Uh, pretty well. I have a pretty big vegetable garden and a little greenhouse. You might have... You might have uh, seen a short. I, I made a couple of shorts or reels or something from my greenhouse one time about the about the athletic videos. <laughs> I should mention that, by the way, I've, on my channel, I've made quite a few uh, interviews now with people uh, concerning Highland athletics and the Highland games and everything and all the events that take place. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, four four interviews. I might do a few more, depending on the who I get or what subjects we can figure out to talk about. I find the athletics fascinating myself. Um, I talk about Jarvina Rout sometimes on this channel. I should post her interview. I did an interview with her actually for the Scottish government when we were working with the Scottish government with Scott Week. She's such an inspiration, um, heavy athlete for the Scottish athletics. I had <laughs> on Dr. Simon Gilmore. The director of the Society of Antiquaries. We have a, a lot of online discussions and and people coming online and talking um, about what it is that they're doing in terms of excavation or just right. work about genealogy or history. And so you need to check back in on the Society of Antiquaries website. But this is something you can do from home and participate yes. with the society. Yes, I saw that on your interview. It was a very nice interview, by the way. And he he mentioned that there's a lot of um, uh, interactive discussions that go on in groups and things, Zoom groups, like perhaps I'm not sure, but that that they conduct. <clears throat> it's been so long since we've talked, everyone. I I kind of lost track of what's happened. I've been pretty busy, so I can't think of everything I should be updating everyone about. But the the Scottish wildcat. Yes. All right, I I have two interviews on the on the Touchnot channel. Uh, one from <clears throat> excuse me, one from a gentleman in Germany, and uh, one from a guy in Scotland. Um, both work with the Wildcats. Um, please take a look at the Touchnot channel and uh, let me know what you think of them. Uh, I worked pretty hard on them. I want to know what people think about it. I had a lot of fun doing it. I learned a lot about the cats. Um, it's essentially the same animal, and uh, these two guys are working in separate countries to. Uh, do what they can to keep them alive and keep keep the uh, species viable. Uh, you know who Bodo uh, Schmitz is? Yes. Uh, Bodo Schmitz is the European McPherson clan chairman. Um, and he does a lot of work for Wildcats in Germany. 
Um, just wanted to mention that um, he's a good friend of mine through the internet and everything. And uh, Bodo got me in touch with the guy in Germany who does work with the Wildcats. So a lot of great stuff going on there with the McPhersons, who are, of course, Wildcat clans. Um, so they're they're fulfilling their purpose as McPhersons in Germany by um, supporting the Wildcat, uh, which is endangered there as well. Well, and we also have the Aegis um, Field Foundation, who is always in the clan tent at Moy. And oh, okay. I'll put a link down below to their work as well. They're another group, nonprofit, and they actually have some webcams that you can go in and, and link into and see um, some of the, the wildcats that they have in um, captivity that they're breeding so that they can release them back to the wild. Matter of fact, right behind you, the cat that's on the shirt and the cat that's on your mug and the cat on the front that you find in the touch knot, this is one of the kittens from that program. And so this is an actual picture of one of the kittens which I think is, is phenomenal. I spoke to um, Callum Urquhart, who uh, works with Agus. Um, oh. He's in my interview. We talked for quite a while. It's a nice long interview, very detailed. Um, he's a great guy, and we uh, really went, went in depth to a, in a lot of subject concerning the Wildcats. That's wonderful, because he is normally at Moy um, in the clan tent. So, so sure. plan to meet back here as soon as you can, Ray. We can't... Um, let two months go by again as we will come back and do another Cats and Coffee about Clan McThomas. So everybody stay tuned to both channels. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. We'll follow Ray to the No Fame Games. We'll also follow him to the Fort the following fort. week. Right. The Fort number four, June fort. 29th. June 29th. Very fun. And um, thank you so much for tuning in and it was so wonderful to see you again, Ray, and do another Cats and Coffee. Oh, it was great. Thank you so much, Cindy. All right, everyone. Touch not. Touch not, and bye for now. See you next week. Bye, folks.